Um, I've listened carefully to what has been said from the benches opposite, and I'm, I'm not persuaded that this is anything other than a good piece of legislation on the whole. But the question for the House this afternoon is whether or not it could be uh, improved. And that is why I have signed uh, the amendments and new clauses tabled by my honourable friend from East Worthing and Shoreham, and by my right honourable friend from Halton Price and Howden, and by the right honourable lady who leads on the Home Affairs uh, Select uh, Committee. Uh, and uh, I think, I'm going to listen very carefully to what the Minister says, that he should remember that this bill has a long journey still ahead of it down the other end, where undoubtedly some of these issues will be prominent in the minds of their lordships. Um, Mr Deputy Speaker, like the Honourable Lady for Hornsey, I had the opportunity, courtesy of the Home Office, to uh, visit Brook House. I went there following the Panorama programme, which led us to believe that conditions there were inhumane. And actually, I thought the conditions were both humane and decent at Brook House. But the problem is this, and I come now to directly to the point I wish to make about the amendment for 28 uh, days, is that the best regime in the world cannot ameliorate the fundamental injustice of a system that arbitrarily imprisons people without time limit solely for administrative reasons. Uh, this is not a matter of criminal justice, but of the administration of our immigration rules. The distinction, Mr Deputy Speaker, is important. Many people in immigration removal centres have never been charged with any crime, while some have previously been in prison following conviction for a criminal offence, but have served their time. All are detained purely and simply because they are liable for removal. Some go on to be removed, but more than half are at an arbitrary later date released and able to remain in the United Kingdom, either temporarily or permanently. We remain, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, the only country, as others have said, in Europe to detain people indefinitely for the purposes of immigration enforcement. If individuals have no right to remain here, we should, in my view, as the key priority, strongly encourage other countries to accept the return of their citizens. And that was something which the coalition government spent a lot of time trying to do uh, in 2010 to 2015. Indeed, we should negotiate such deals and procedures as an urgent necessity. In this way, individuals are no longer left in limbo in immigration detention. This proposal, only for 28 days, only applies to the use of arbitrary, indefinite administrative detention. Convicted criminals will serve their sentences and will then face removal if they have no right to remain. If the crime is particularly serious, and the prisoner presents a risk to public safety, it will be for a criminal parole board to carry out a risk assessment and to decide when and if an individual can be released. In those extreme cases, we should surely expect the Immigration Service to have removal arrangements in place to coincide with the release date. This is not, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, a seismic change, but one that will nevertheless save the country over £500 a week per person currently spent on detention. This is a significant saving since 27,331 people entered detention in 2017 alone. In addition, I was surprised to discover, as I indicated to my right honourable friend, that over the past five years, £21 million has been paid out in damages for unlawful detention. This figure came from a Home Office question recently and it could be vastly reduced, if not eradicated, if a 28-day time limit were in place. Will you allow me? Uh, I, I will indeed, of course. I'm most grateful. I wonder if you could just join me in observing that, of necessity, the uh, amendments selected only apply to EEA and Swiss nationals. Will you join me in saying to ministers that we would like to see the government move forward and adopt this, but for everyone? Well, my, my honourable friend makes an extremely reasonable point, and I'm sure that the minister, who will have listened to the reasonable points being made uh, both from both sides of the House, but particularly from his own side, will want to take that on board. Mr Deputy Speaker, the absence of a time limit does nothing to promote speed and efficiency in the administration of justice by the Immigration Service. I believe that the introduction of one would improve working practices, as well as creating a more humane system of immigration control. Thank you.